So 1.2 is all about using objects. And I want you to think of objects as um, a virtual, like, a, like an object in real life, basically. So just think of a virtual object. That's what it means by objects. So in this case, it was a turtle. We have little turtles on the screen that have certain attributes to them. Um, you can't do that with you know a variable or anything like that, like because they don't have attributes in a, in a way like the variable can be looked at as an attribute. I guess you can think of it that way, but it would be an attribute just kind of like in the ether. It's not like for a specific thing or specific object. So that's why I'm using this this turtles example because you know you can see it in real life as an object. We're just thinking of it virtually as an object. Um, we went over the attributes that it has. This is just anything that describes an object. Okay, and then methods are anything an object can do, okay? Um, which is kind of nice because if you think about objects in like, like just to say a video game and you want um, a certain object, let's just say it's a player of the video game to do a different method, maybe like jump and like maybe the character couldn't jump previously and then all of a sudden they can jump. All you have to do is make a new method for that same object and then that object would do it rather than having to like rewrite all the code. You're just adding an extra layer to what's already there, to the methods that are there. So yeah, today we are at one, two, two. So we're instantiation. Instantiation just means making an instance. Making an instance is making an object. So we're gonna be creating objects today. I mean, it's more of a focus on that. We, we made objects technically in one, two, one as well. Um, we talked about that yesterday with the enduring understanding. We went over all the terms yesterday. So we are on one, two, two today. And this is just gonna be a sneak preview basically of what 122 is all about. You're not expected to understand everything in 122 from this little blurb that I'm about to say. Okay. So it says creating and storing objects also known as instantiation. Okay. So if you see that, it just means like creating an instance. So we're going to go over what's called a constructor today. Um, but you should know this right here, what this code does. It's, this is the type. So it's world type. The name of the object is world. And then this is how you actually create the object. You type new, and then you use whatever constructor you're using. This constructor, the reason it's called a constructor is because it constructs an object, okay? So if you want to think of it, it's like a function almost that creates the object, okay? This one is going to create a new, a, a new world for the turtle to live in. And it, you have to use this constructor right here. It has the parentheses in it. Constructors always have the same name as the class as well. So the class is called world. So it's gonna have the same name of it. If you notice turtle right here, also has the turtle constructor right here. So it's gonna create a new turtle based on whatever the input is here, in this case, world. So it's gonna create a new turtle in this world here. The world is defined up here by this constructor. Now you might be thinking, what, do you, what does that mean? Like, what does this constructing mean? Like, what does this world mean? You don't need to know what any of that is. I'm just trying to explain to you like what a constructor does. It creates that object. So like this line right, oh, it says right here in the comments, creates, creates a new world object. Let's just say creates, it creates a new world object here. Okay, this one creates a new turtle object. And we did do this yesterday. If you actually went through that pre-activity because it, it, you had to do like turtle yurtle equals new turtle. So you did have to create a the yurtle, which is the name of one of the objects of turtle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you just have to do the one to one activity and it'll make more sense. Okay, so we're talking about these constructors. It initializes the attributes and it just, forget all those words, it, it just constructs an object, okay? And it has the same name as the class. I kind of already said that, okay? So it creates a new object and it says it initializes the attributes. Um, so there are certain attributes if you use a certain constructor. I'm gonna show you, um, here, I guess it's the next one. Okay, constructor signature, um, it says constructor name followed by the parameter list. Here, let's just, I'm gonna actually show you what all this means here. Let me, okay, it open still, not this one, hold on. This will make more sense if I show you like an example. Um, so here, this right here is creating a world. So I'm actually gonna comment this out. This is create a world world object right here. And it is defining it by this 400 and this 400. What that really is, is just 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So that's the input for that constructor. So it's creating a type of world. If I wanted to make it 300 by 400, then I could put a 300 in there. So you can kind of initialize the attributes of what that world is about, the size of the world, essentially. This one right here, all right, I should say create the world object called lowercase world, okay? Here, it's creating a turtle object 
called Yertle. Okay. The other example that I was doing before, it just said like, it said turtle T. It doesn't really matter. That was just an example I used and screenshotted it. Um, but this creates a turtle object called Yertle. If I wanted to, I can create another turtle called uh, Myrtle. I'm just trying to follow the rhyme scheme here and uh, also put it in that same world. Okay. If you leave this blank, I think it just defaults a world. Actually, I really don't know. I'd have to check the code. We'll do that in a little bit. But this just creates another turtle object that uh, is in this world. And if I wanted to, like if you go down here, it says yurtle.setColor. It's setting the color of yurtle. It's not doing anything to myrtle. So myrtle's color is still whatever it was initialized as. Maybe it starts off as, as red or something like that. I don't know. Um, and if you notice, this, this, this code right here is only making yurtle move. Um, Myrtle would not actually move themselves. So let's actually run this. I actually kind of want to see what happens on this. It's, you're going to have two turtles. One of them's not moving at all. This is where it's initialized at the beginning. And, and then um, this is Yertle. And then the, the, uh, the smaller one, oh, it didn't blow it up. The one on the, the bottom here is, uh, is, is Myrtle. And there's Yertle there. Okay, so you can see two different objects, but they're running the same code. I don't have separate code for Myrtle and separate code for Yertle, right? They're still running this turtle code right here. And again, ignore, whoa, what is going on? Ignore all this code. Remember I said there's like thousands of lines of code in this? This is, I mean, this isn't thousands of lines for this individual one here. Um, but this whole thing right here, this turtle just makes more turtle. So it's using the same code. I don't need a separate code for each turtle object I'm making. Okay, so again, going back to the cookie cutter example where like you can use the same cookie cutter to make a bunch of cookies. They're all the same shape, but you can have different color frosting on them, different sprinkles, different chocolate chips, different whatever it is. Okay, so that's kind of a review from stuff we did yesterday a little bit with just making, where am I at here? With just making uh, new objects. Um, if you notice, I didn't tell Myrtle to do anything. So Myrtle's just whatever the default is. Let's go back here. All right, so to talk about constructors, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open up this turtle code again. If you look right here, it says constructors. This person like commented their code so well, Barb Erickson, the, the author of this, that email address doesn't work. I tried to email them today um, to thank them for this uh, code, but it bounced back. So not that, the, I don't know why I said that, sorry. Um, but she made this. Uh, in 2004, it looks like, uh, and other people have just been using it for, you know, teaching objects or, you know, having people do stuff with the turtles or maybe augmenting the code to be a certain way. But it says her constructor. So she commented this very well and labeled everything. This is a constructor right here. Okay. It says public. And then it says the name of the class. It's different than saying public class, the name of the class here though. And then you have certain things right here, certain attributes, int x, y, int x, int, int y, and then picture. Picture is a whole nother class in itself that we're not gonna worry about, but it's named picture. So we're gonna assume that that's the picture of the turtle um, when you're constructing a turtle. Um, we're gonna go over super later, so don't worry about that right now. But if you notice, there's another constructor right here. And this constructor has different inputs. This one has a model display. This one had a picture. Okay, if we keep going here, here's another constructor that takes the model display. It's just model display. It doesn't take the X and the Y, which means the X and the Y are default something, all right? So you can make a turtle that has a certain X, Y initially, or you can just leave it blank. So if you notice, there's multiple constructors. When this happens, it's called overloading constructors. You have multiple constructors and they all do different things. And you can have it where there's an X and a Y. And if there isn't an X and a Y, then it goes to the next constructor. If uh, if, the, if that's blank, we can keep going. There's one of the, here's another constructor that constructs turtle based on just one input. Okay. This parameter here, this input that goes into the function, just think f of x. This thing right here is the input for it. It constructs it based on this picture p. Okay. And this, wow, she labeled this really well. This says methods. So the, these are all constructors, and how you call them is based on what's here. So actually, let's go back to the main code to see how they did it here. So it says right here, uh, for Yertle, it says new turtle world. Okay. Now I'm assuming world is that this model display thing because it's like the model world. So it would be calling this constructor. Okay. This constructor right here because, oh no, I lied. It wouldn't be that one. It'd be this one because it's just world in there. 
So when I call this constructor here, it's just world. So there's only one input. It, it would be calling this thing right here, the model display, I'm assuming anyway. Okay. Now, if I put certain like um, attributes in here, I'm assuming it's wherever the thing's going to be located. So let's do 100 comma 50 comma world. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep Myrtle there as well. Let's, let's run this. Okay. And uh, you can see that they it defaulted way up there. Um, the way the XY coordinate plane works in, uh, in this is it goes zero, zero is this corner up here, and then it increases from here. There's no negatives. So that's why it's way up there with the 50, 100. It started here. So that would be 50 and then 100 going down. And then it moved up and over. But that's where it started. And if you don't, uh, if you don't have that 50 and 100, then it's going to call a different constructor. And it defaults that value to actually, I really don't know the, the default. I'm assuming 200, 200 if it's right in the center here. And then it goes over. Does that make sense? Are people even paying attention? Yeah. Okay. Um, it'll make more sense when you do this. And I know this is a lot um, for some of you. And then some of you probably think this is super easy. Um, this is brand new for everyone, unless you've taught yourself object oriented programming. This is not covered in CSP. As I said yesterday, this was not covered in ICS because it's, this is a college level type thing. Um, object oriented programming is roof stoof. So if you're confused, that's okay. We have plenty of time to practice that, but I want to just kind of give you the gist of what's going on with constructors. Okay. You can have multiple constructors. A constructor signature is just what I was showing you already. The constructor name followed by the parameter list. So this is a construction signature right here. Okay, this is another, sorry, constructor signature. This is another constructor sig signature. This is another constructor signature. Okay, the parameters are the inputs. Um, so it says the parameter list. Um, it's a list of the types of parameters and the variable names that are used to refer to them. So like we had the variables X and Y here. This is a constructor signature. All right, the next thing is overloading constructors. I already talked about it. When there is more than one constructor, you could just have one if you wanted. Um, they must differ in the number and type and order of the parameters. So if you, if you remember when I was showing you these different constructors, um, if you notice this one um, has different inputs, different parameters than this one, which has different ones than this one, which has different ones than this one, you can't have the same one. If you did accidentally put the same one in there, it just won't compile and it's going to throw an error. Okay, so it's basically like these constructors are, so I, I talked about this before, a class is almost like a factory. So the turtle class is like a turtle factory and it just makes turtles. The constructors are like the people inside of that factory and different people make different turtles, if you want to think of it that way, um, to try to use an analogy. It is really important to understand analogies with this stuff too, because all of this stuff is virtual. All of this stuff is still based on human thought. And it's all meant to, to, ana to be an analogy to things in the real world. That's why they use the word object, even though it's not really an object, it's a bunch of ones and zeros. But like, so make sure you understand like some type of, some, some type of analogy. I like the class as a factory, it makes turtles. The constructors are the people that are constructing the turtles and every constructor is different. And it has to be, okay? Uh, the new keyword, I kind of already talked about that, the keyword that's used to create a new object. Okay, and it calls a constructor. It's always new and then construct whatever the class name is, which matches the constructor name. So really that should say new constructor name, but it is always the same as the class name anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, and again, we use the new ones right here, the new keywords here to make new objects. That's what that new is right here. Okay. Um, and by the way, I did tell everyone, I, I sent an email in December to do the solo learn. So hopefully you did do the solo learn and then you, you, you would know about the new keyword. You would know about constructors because there's a whole module all about this. So if you are like super confused, then you probably didn't do the solo learn. Like I, I asked. So, and that's okay. You can still, you can still do it. You can still have time for it. All right. Parameters. We talked about this already. It's the inputs. Like it's, it's basically what goes into each constructor, each method, each whatever you're looking at. Um, it's just the, the input for it. And it says allows values to be passed to the constructor to initialize newly created objects or attributes. Um, this is not as important to understand, but like actual parameters are the values. But if it's formal, it's just like abstract. For example, the ones I was showing you 
here, this is formal. These are formal parameters because it's just abstract. We don't know what X is. We don't know what Y is. We don't know what picture is. But now if you actually go to when you call it, we, we put 400, 400 in here. We put world in here and world is defined. So this is the actual parameter versus the, the uh, what you call it, the formal parameter. Okay, you don't really need to know that. I, a lot of people just kind of use them synonymously. They just say parameter, even if it's a formal or actual, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I don't think they nitpick that stuff where it's like, which of the following is a formal parameter? Just know formal is like the general and actual is what the actual value is. Okay. And uh, that's basically it for like the rundown of what 122 is all about. Okay. You should know how to create objects. You should know how to use the new keyword. You should know how to um, look at the different types of constructors um, by the end of doing 122, essentially. Okay. It is also really important to understand that I have no idea how this turtle thing really works. Um, I just found it online and I was like, whoa, this is cool. We've got to use this for this class. But I, you just tinker with it. When I coded for a company, all I did was tinker with stuff and just try to get it to work. Um, some of you saw me do that when I like was putting certain things in. Um, I, you know, I'm hoping it works. I'm hoping something you know ends up coming out of it. But if it doesn't, then that's when you would actually like you know go check the comments of whatever this code is here. Um, also, it's also I, I kind of want to show you this. I made like kind of a family tree diagram for this because um, before it was kind of all mixed up. So I tried to spread it around so you can see like main draws from turtle, which draws from simple turtle, which uses picture which uses simple picture. There's a certain interface here. So you can kind of see like, I don't know, that's what's kind of cool about BlueJ is it shows how things are linked, which is important with, with object oriented. If you notice the first stuff we were doing with 1.1, there was no objects on it. So there was no need for me to call other classes from other things. Um, but this one kind of shows how everything's related. Um, some of this stuff, I have no idea how it works. Like most of it, I don't because I mean, look, just opening this up, look at how many lines of code there are. 353. So imagine reading through all of this. And also this 353 lines of code are based off of this class right here, this color class, was it, which was imported. So if you actually go to the source code for that, there's thousands and thousands of lines of code of that. It would take you a year and a half to actually go through all this and like try to figure it all out. That's why I want you to focus on abstracting away the details and just focusing on like what's in front of you, focusing on the problem at hand. If you want to do something crazy and cool, then yeah, then look at the source code and try to figure out how all of it works. But like, you know, if I sat here and tried to study all this, then it would be my full-time job. I would never be able to teach because I wouldn't get any lessons done. So you abstract away the details, abstract them away.